who was Julius Caesar? We best remember Julius Caesar for his unique and tragic death and for his imaginary last words, e tu Brute. However, there is much more to this man. Julius Caesar was a creative thinker whose experiences helped him become a strategic innovator capable of dealing with nearly everything that life threw at him. Specifically through the, throughout the events and his youth, his military career, and his political career. My first point is that the political climate of late Republican Rome shaped Julius Caesar's young life, forcing him to be enormously resourceful and resilient. Julius Caesar was born on the 13th of July, 100 BC, to a wealthy family of, Juli of Julia. However, his family had somewhat fallen in their influence over the past few years. At the age of 15, Julius Caesar's father died, so he became the head of his household. His family was favored by Gaius Marius, who was one of the most prominent politi politicians of the day. He made Julius Caesar the high priest of Jupiter, which was a very great honor. However, when Marius's rival Sulla rose to power, Caesar, afraid of being punished, fled to Rome, fled from Rome. But at 19, he was caught by Sulla. However, as Plutarch says, quote, Caesar bribed his captor, a, sincere, a centurion named Cornelius, with two talents, unquote. Julius Caesar then went to Turkey, where he finds success in the military. When Sulla died, he returned to Rome and intended to become a lawyer, but finding that he needed to study, he traveled to the island of Rhodes to study rhetoric. But Caesar was captured by, by some of the pirates who infested the sea. They demanded 20 talents from him. He laughed at them for underestimating his, his value and suggested that they ask him to give them 50 talents, which was the equivalent of about $70 million. He sent them to bring, he sent men to go and fetch money for his ransom. Meanwhile, Caesar was left with the pirates. He began to make fun of them, even though they could technically kill him at, at, at any moment because he was their captive. He told them that they were too noisy when sleeping. He made fun of the way they spoke, and he called them illiterate and barbarous. He decided to teach them and make them orators, and he would also threaten to hang them. So thus, the pirate crew almost, almost became to, to treat him as their leader. Eventually, the ransom was, pay was paid and Julius was free. He immediately went, hired men, and then came back and crucified all the pirates. My second point was that, is that Caesar was one of the greatest military strategists in history. His innovative thinking and use of Rome's engineering abilities allowed him to win many of Rome's most impressive victories. After crucifying the pirates, Caesar decided to become, not to become a lawyer and he joined the army. He began to climb in the ranks, eventually becoming governor of Spain. He made friends with two very important people. Crassus, who was basically a super rich dude, who had made money by seizing assets from enemies of the state and also like scamming poor people, and General Pompey, who was Rome's greatest general and was somewhat of a celebrity. The three men formed an alliance that was beneficial to all, called the First Triumvirate. Pompey later married Caesar's daughter, Julia, further aligning himself with Caesar's family. Caesar was actually using these two men to achieve a higher rank. He became a senator, then a consul in 59 BC. 
he introduced a land reform which gave land to veterans and poor people, which increased his popularity with the lower classes. Caesar next moved on to becoming the governor of Gaul, which is now um, France. He, d he wanted to become governor of Gaul because he saw an opportunity to increase his standing by invading the Gaelic lands because Gaul was on the edge of the Roman Empire. He was able to defeat several prominent tribes. Caesar then began to create a narrative around himself and his achievements. He would write stories about his adventures and send them back to Rome, even beginning to outshine and replace Pompey. Pompey was actually obsessed with his new wife, and so he did not really become jealous of Caesar at this point. He didn't really care about anything, I guess. Um, so. Then Caesar continued to expand the reach of his armies throughout Gaul. He made a bridge in record time over the Rhine River and crossed his armies where no Roman troops had ever been before. But he didn't really have any military reason to do this, he was just showing off. He also rather unsuccessfully invaded Britain, which happened to be really scary. This was also more impressive because no one Roman had ever set foot on Britain, on Britain before, and some even thought it was the land of the dead. However, Caesar's alliance was about to fall apart. Crassus, who was wanting to eclipse the other's success, invaded Parthia, but was soon killed. Caesar's daughter died, and Pompey began to become a political en enemy while he was trying to reassert his position. Caesar was, was faced with a, the with a rebellion of the Gaelic tribes. The Battle of Alessia, of Alessia was fought in September of 52 BC. It was the last major engagement between the Gauls and the Romans and is considered one of Caesar's greatest military achievements. The last of the Gaelic tribes had united under one leader. Their troops outnumbered the Romans, and they had the high ground and had encamped inside the fortification of Alicia. Their leader sent for, to get reinforcements, and although Caesar had less men, he decided to surround the fort, which would thin out his troops, so didn't make a lot of sense. But then he went on to build an inward facing wall all the way around the fort. And then they turned around and built an outward facing wall around that one. Thus Caesar gave himself the tactical advantage with the strongest position. Now he had a fortification where, as Michael Schiavone says, quote, attackers from the outside would need to pass through a field of wood blocks with iron hooks, sharpened stakes and pits, two trenches, and a palisade with towers." Unquote. My third point is that Caesar began to gain political power in Rome. Thus he was able to acquire a vast network of supporters, but this ironically led to his assass assassination. After his victory at Alessia, Caesar became very popular with the Roman people. However, the senators began to fear that Caesar wanted to take over. Pompey sided with the senators and made bold claims about how his soldiers were loyal to him and would follow him against a war against Caesar. However, many of Pompey's veterans actually liked Caesar because he had given them land which they could live off of. Thus, they sided with Caesar. In 49 BC, Caesar crossed the Rubicon River, thus declaring war, famously saying, quote, the die is cast, unquote. Pompey and the senators fled to Greece and, advent and conveniently left the treasury to Caesar in Rome, so he had 
a lot of resources. Eventually, Caesar pursued Pompey and defeated him in Greece. Pompey then fled to Egypt and was immediately assassinated. Caesar was actually disgusted by this and executed the assassins, because even though he was at odds with Pompey, they were still friends. Back in Rome, Caesar decided to reform the calendar and remake Rome in other ways. In 44 BC, he was elected dictator for life. Many senators began to suspect Caesar of planning to make himself king because of acts such as wearing purple all the time, which was a color that was a sign of royalty. Fearing a monarchy or just being envious of Caesar, many senators, including Brutus, who was actually suspected of being Julius' son, began to plan an assassination. However, the question is, was Caesar actually warned about this plan as the play about him um, seems to say? First off, we have Spurina, who was the Etruscan priest, who told Caesar to beware of the Ides of March, because that is the day that he ended up being assassinated on. However, what he actually said was beware for the next 30 days until the Ides of March. This was not a lucky prediction, but rather a calculated assessment of Rome's political climate. Um, in one instance, Caesar was dining with some of the conspirators, and he openly discussed how he wished to die. He basically told them that he would probably like to be stabbed to death. Caesar's wife was, haunt was, Caesar's wife was haunted by nightmares and told him not to go to the Senate that day. However, for some reason, Caesar listened to Decimus, who told him not to listen to his wife. Unfortunately for Caesar, Decimus was one of the 60 conspirators who stabbed him 22 times that day in the Senate. In conclusion, although we often just remember Julius Caesar for his death, he was also a creative thinker whose experiences helped him become a strategic innovator, capable of dealing with nearly everything that life threw at him, specifically throughout his youth, his military career, and his career in politics. Thank you.